Okay, welcome to episode number two. So a couple things before we jump into this. Um, many of you um, precisely noticed that this tuning cap was rubbing, and I'm still working on that. It looks like I have a couple of bent fins here. Um, not too bad though, I mean, it's just an easy adjustment. But for those of you that are working on these things, they're not supposed to rub like that, right? So um, you gotta make sure that these things are smooth and you don't hear noise like this, listen. Okay, so we're gonna fix that. So we've removed all the tubes. And the one thing that I did notice right away <clears throat> is that we've got a little rust here on the chassis. So I've cleaned the top of the chassis off with these kind of disinfecting wipes just to get the crap off there. And it's really, really clean with the exception of this particular area, which has a little bit of rust. So you know what that means. That means we're going to take a little bit of our navel jelly. I'm going to pop that on there. I'll show you where the rust is right there. Because right, we want to protect this thing. We don't want it to rust anymore. So we're going to put a little bit of this navel jelly right here. And put a little bit right here. Just in the areas where there's rust. And this will do the same thing that it did on the other part that I showed you. There's a little bit right here next to this can as well. Remember the story here. Keep it thick. Keep it wet. Okay, so that's going to be the first order of business. We're going to let this uh, do its job. And uh, when we get done with this, we'll come back and, uh, and we'll start our wiring. By the way, this can right here, I'm going to have to definitely pull that wire out. It's all missing insulation right there. All right, I'll be back. Okay, our chassis is in good shape. So we've gotten all this rust off here. Looking good. So what's next? Well, what's next is controversial, <laughs> but I'm not afraid. So we're going to remove this cap can, cap can, we're going to remove this can, and we're going to replace this wire. Look at it, it's bare right here where it goes into the can. In order to do that, there's two screws on the other side, one here and one here. Then you have to remove this screw on top. Very delicate, it's a brass screw, so you got to be careful. While we have it out, we're going to take a look at the mica underneath and make sure we don't have mica disease. And if we do, we'll see if we can clean it. And then we'll replace this wire very carefully. We'll see where it attaches to. And we'll put a new wire out there. So that's going to be the plan. I think I may just end up taking this one off as well and checking the mica on that one. I can't imagine it has mica disease because I don't think this radio got a lot of use, but I'd rather know now. So um, while we're under there, we're going to test the coils, all that good stuff. So let me get to this operation and then we'll take it from there. Okay, I've given it some thought and I'm really hesitant to take this can off. Um, the only reason why I'm hesitant is because the wires that come out underneath are also that rubber shit and they're not cracked. So I don't want to disturb them. So I think what I'm going to try to do, I don't know if you could see this, we're going to try to make you see this here. You'll see that there's a little hole right here on this side and there's one hole here and they have the wire coming up through there and you'll see there's the wire like that so what we're going to try to do is take a piece of heat shrink tube and put it over that and make sure that it um, doesn't touch anything I have to see what size I'm going to need so I've got a couple of sizes here I got this black one let's see if it fits in the hole I think that's the objective is we want it to fit in that hole right there okay that one does okay good so we're going to use black and what we're going to do is we're going to cut this wire right here and we're going to slide that down and then we'll be able to attach a new wire to it okay so we're going to snip right there i'm going to remove the insulation that's that's left some of you may be cringing now and going what the hell is he doing I know you can't see because my hand's in the way, but just give me a minute. This stuff just falls apart. There we go. Now, if I look through the hole, I can see some of the wire in there. You see that white thing right there around it? So let's, um, for kicks, for starters, we're going to take a piece about this big. I'm going to slide that down. I'm going to get it to go right in that hole. 
perfect. Okay? So essentially, we've got this thing now isolated from the can. And of course, we're going to test that. Make sure it's not touching. It's not supposed to be. All right, so let's test. Good, nothing. Okay, so I'm actually able to slide that down a little bit, which is good. Let's test again. Great. Okay, so um, now all I really need to do is take a piece of wire with the coil method. All right, you can see this piece of wire hanging out here. Piece of wire with the coil method, solder it, put another piece of heat shrink down, reattach this uh, grid cap, and this is good to go. All right, so, you know, it's not always the simple thing. I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, it's not always, it's not always easy to pick the most difficult thing to do. All right, sometimes you gotta rethink it and, um, and go with something easy instead of re-engineering and taking risks, which I don't wanna do here, okay? Um, when this is all done, I probably will take the uh, heat gun Matter of fact, let me do that now so it doesn't slip down any further. So we're going to just take the heat gun and give this thing a shot and, um, and make sure it's nice and secure. Let's do that now. There we go. All right, good. All done. All right, successful repair. I don't, you don't need to see the rest. <laughs> attaching a wire to here, but we now have this protected and insulated. Okay, that's how you do it sometimes, guys. I'll be back. Okay, just to go over uh, some progress, um, we've we've basically repaired this wire. I didn't take the can off. Got that uh, reattached, and I've got some uh, liquid tape. So that's done. I've replaced the wire that comes up through here and attaches to that tube, so that's done. And I've also uh, repaired the wiring that goes to the speaker. So that's complete. So the next thing we want to do is we want to get this tuning cap reinstalled. Now I'm going to use these grommets. Now they look a little bit thick to me, so I'm going to, I may not be able to use these, but we're going to try them. So we'll put these grommets in. And you got to remember this tuning cap needs to be isolated from the chassis, right? So um, we're going to Pop these in there and see how that works out. So let me get that in and I'll show you what it looks like. By the way, we did fix the tuning cap. No longer rubs. Right? Good stuff. So we've got our uh, grommets mounted. Now, it, the way it attaches is underneath with these screws. What I'm a little concerned about is these grommets are very thick. So we're going to try to mount one. And we'll see if I can get it to bite. So let's, uh, let's do that with you guys here. So you could see. So when I put the screw through, it doesn't protrude. So I'm going to have to squeeze a little bit. But that's okay. Let's see what happens. I'm going to have to do the first one off camera. <laughs> I don't want to start messing around with screwdrivers and stuff. I'll be right back. All right, so our, uh, our grommets are a little too thick. I can't get these short screws to go through there, right? So we got to fix that. Now, if you look at the original grommets, of course, they were compressed a little bit, but there's a big difference. So here's how I think I'm going to do it. I'm going to take this needle nose plier. I'm going to put this grommet in there and come down about there where there's just a little bit of overhang on each side, like so. I'm going to try to make it as straight as I can. I'm going to squeeze like that. See it? Then I'm going to take this razor and just slice on both ends. Let's do this so you can see it. It's almost like uh, working in a deli here, right? Same thing on this side. Okay, and when we take this open, let's see what we get. It's thinner. So we're going to put this in, like so. And if I put the screw in from underneath, I should get a little bit of thread coming up on top. 
I'm going to have to be a little careful with this and make sure I do a uh, continuity test with the tuning cap just to be safe. Let's see if we put the screw in what happens. There you go. See we got a little bit of thread there. So that's the uh, that's going to be the plan. I got these other two I need to do and that's how we're going to handle it. Okay? Be back. Okay everybody, um, before I show you what we've done with the radio, and we've done a lot, I want to go over this Antique Radio Battery Eliminator 3 uh, eliminator basically that I got a couple of years ago. Um, it's made by a company uh, out in Jackson, Michigan, and basically it, it lets you test radios that are uh, battery powered. So you've got your A, your B, and your C here, and they give you different degrees of voltages there, and I'll zoom in a little bit. So A, obviously you can tune, so you've got a little pot here, we'll cover that in a moment. On your B side, you've got 6790, 135, 4522, and on the C side you have minus 22, minus 9, minus 4.5. So for this radio that we're working on, um, we call for 1.5 volts and 90 volts. So um, before you uh, turn anything on and try things, you've got to make sure you adjust this correctly. So I have a meter here connected to DC, connected to the A, A plus and the A minus. Let's turn it on. And you'll see that we're currently at 1.2 volts. Now on this radio we need 1.5. So we're just going to turn this little pot right here. A little too, it's very sensitive. Now it could be over just a little bit. Let's say right around there is good for now. Okay, so then what we're going to do is we're going to test out the 90 volt side. So let's do that. So here's our negative and here's our positive. Let's see what the meter says. 93. So that's our 90. That's really what you got to do with this thing. That's how it works. Okay, so um, we're going to go back to uh, our positive 1.5 side and just check it one more time before we power the radio up. So we're, we're close enough. So now I'm going to show you what I did on the radio and then we'll connect this to that. Okay? Be right back. Okay, onto the radio. You'll see that we've replaced uh, all the bad wires that come up to the grid caps here. This one I'm going to redo because I don't like it, but that's fine. We've got our tuning cap remounted. We've got our, um, this is our wires for our battery. Right back here are the wires that go to the antenna. Let me flip it over and show you what we've done underneath. Okay, and you'll see underneath that we've replaced all the caps. There is one electrolytic in there. It's a four microfarad cap. I use the uh, pigtail method for all of these caps because I don't want to be disturbing any of these wires under here. I only replaced the wires that I had to that were damaged. So, um, so you know, we've got to be really careful with this. We don't want to start yanking wires off of things. Next thing I'll do is I'll test these resistors out because these resistors are crucial to the radio. Okay? And this is the, um, the economizer switch. So the economizer switch basically was used if you, if you were running this thing on battery and uh, your 1.5 volt battery started to get weak. Obviously that's for your filaments. This economizer um, switch would uh, basically lower the number of milliamps that were being drawn and allow you to use the radio a little bit longer. So that's what that's about. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to turn this thing over and we're going to power it up with the uh, battery eliminator. How cool is that? So um, let's pull the shot up a little bit right there. So this is our B plus, which goes to 90 right there. Right here is our B minus right there. And then we have wires that go to the uh, 1.5. And the 1.5 is the right side, so that's plus. And we're going to leave that meter connected as well, so you can watch the voltage of the 1.5 filament voltage. Okay, so we have everything connected here. I put um, pigtails, I'm sorry, uh, gator wire on these two wires. Let's turn the volume down. We're going to turn the power up. Let's turn it on. 
Predator coming out of their tap. When you can choose a Pelican Smart Notice Combo the, uh, System the 1. and 5 you can here. remove all of that scale, 97% of chlorine, 99% of scale. Parlato. I do have the antenna connected to that loop antenna as well that I showed you. But on power up, this thing works great. Guaranteed to do that. And we have had a Pelican. Now keep in mind, I haven't done an alignment yet. But this thing sounds really, really good. It's coming right through the speaker, right here. So, um, so the radio itself is in great shape. Now there's one, one thing I have to do here. Let me lower this and let me turn it off. So the volume knob on this thing is very, very hard to turn. Um, it's, it needs to be cleaned. So I'm going to have to go in there, uh, unsolder all the wires, take it apart, clean it, and then put it back together and I'll show you how that works as well so um, from a restoration perspective the radio is in great shape I still am going to check the resistors and see if the resistors are in tolerance of course you don't want resistors out of tolerance because your tubes won't last and these tubes are very sensitive so um, we're going to make sure that that's in good shape but theoretically the radio is up so the next step is going to be to build the power supply and, um, you know, the power supply is basically going to be replicating this, but only with 90 and 1.5 volts. So um, the transformer I'm going to use uh, is a little overkill. Uh, it's a 200, uh, 0, 200, so basically 400, um, 400 volts when I only need 90. And the, um, the winding I'm going to use for the filaments is a 5 volt winding, obviously. I'm going to have to step that down, and I'll put a potentiometer in there just like here so that I can adjust it down to 1.5. Um, but that's what we're going to use. We're going to use you know, full wave rectifiers and we're going to build a circuit. Um, and I've had a little help with that, just being fully honest with you. But I'm going to modify it just slightly a little bit for something I want to do. So, um, so that'll be the, uh, the second part of this restore is building that power supply. If you remember, I make my own circuit cards. So I'm going to make a circuit card that fits into the case that I showed you. Um, that I'm going to mount inside the uh, inside the box, and uh, if you remember, it looks like this. Okay, so I'm going to basically, if you look at this here, you'll see the transformer sits right there, and I just need to build a circuit card that sits in like this. It's not a big circuit, right? And then I already have a trim pot here, which I can use to trim the the uh, filament voltage. I just have to replace it with a, I think it's a 500k or something, and. Um, that will give me a power supply and I'm going to put an indicator light so you know it's on um, and we'll, we'll take it from there all right so that's the uh, that's the plan on the power supply but for the rest of the day what we're going to do today is go through uh, all the resistors and make sure everything's good but in theory the radio works really well here holding the fort down while he's away right. and All so right. thanks for joining us today okay you long time no see yeah. you'll notice the radio comes right on right so there's not a lot of uh, warm-up time on these bulbs anyway that's the uh, that's the story on this episode uh, so everything is cleaned everything's put back together the tuning cap has been fixed from the rubbing that you heard all the capacitors have been changed we got rid of all these old wax jobs which quite honestly I don't think this radio got much use at all doesn't look like it at all <clears throat> so we're basically running a brand new radio here so um, I think what I'll do in the next episode I will uh, start to talk about the, um, the the power supply that we're going to build and I'll give you an update on this uh, on this on off slash potentiometer and cleaning that and getting that to work smooth again it's very very resistant watch this it's very hard to turn I'm putting a lot of pressure on that and it's not turning fast so that's the story. All right, guys. So uh, I hope uh, I hope you learned a little bit something here. Um, you've got the antique battery eliminator, and um, one one other thing I want to do is these tube shields. I want to paint them. They look kind of grungy, so uh, I'll uh, I'll paint these with a nice little uh, silver.
so at least they look decent on here. And um, we'll have a nice radio. All right, that's it for this episode, guys. See you in part three. One other thing I want to mention before I wrap up um, for the speaker and the antenna, I'm going to use something called luminaire connectors. And they're basically quick disconnects, connect disconnects. They go up to 600 volts and they allow you to quickly uh, remove and, and you know get, open up the case and get things out. So um, I'll be adding that and you'll see that in the next episode as well. I'll probably also add that to the power supply. Um, this way there's no hard wiring there so it can be removed. Um, but I like to do that just to make it easy to take it apart if you ever have to service it again. Alright, I'll show you those in the next episode. Take care folks.